Hi there, how to be students. So we've done the activity where you were using the quadratic formula that I have here, and you've been working out uh, the roots of the equation, or if you like, the x-intercepts of the equation, if you're thinking of it in terms of the graph. So what you've done in your small Google groups is you've been trying to work out what patterns you see, maybe grouping some of the answers together, and trying to come up with an idea of how you could recognize the different situations that you've got. And we did decide that there were three different types. So this is why I've got three columns. And here we're going to talk about what it looks like in terms of the formula. And here we're going to talk about what it looks like in terms of a graph. But then we put the ideas of what it looks like in an equation and a graph together. And so we're learning it as one entity, not lots of separate parts. But we're understanding the whole picture, the conceptual understanding. So when we were going through it, some people said sometimes what you get is curves that look like this and look like this. And they cut the x-axis twice. Sometimes you say they only touch the x-axis once. So the turning point is actually on the x-axis. And then you've got some others that just never touch the x-axis. Okay? So in these three different ones that we've got, this one here is that you've got two answers that are the roots of the equation. Okay? or the two intercepts, x-intercepts. This one, you have one answer. And what you've got is one intercept of the x-axis. And this one, there's no answer because it never touches the x-axis. So, it crosses x-axis twice, touches x-axis once, Never crosses axis, never touches the x axis. Let's say that. So we've got those three scenarios, and you broke those into those groups. Okay? So then we need to have a look at the equation. So when did that happen? Well, what you noticed was that this is the telltale part. It's all to do with this part and what you've got in here. So when you had one with two answers, was when the square root part had a positive value inside. Because if you square root that, then you've got the minus b plus the answer to that, and minus b minus the answer to that, then being divided by the 2a, of course. And then you're always going to get two answers, or two solutions. Okay. When we only had one answer, the b squared minus 4ac, that part inside there was equal to 0. So that part disappeared, and you just got minus b over 2a is the answer. So um, you just get the one answer. But that is also the maximum or the minimum turning point. And, that, and it's going to be, and it's on the x-axis. Okay? And then the last one, when you looked inside the square root, you actually had a negative number. And unless you know about complex numbers, which is a whole different set of numbers you might see uh, in grade 11 and 12, you cannot um, square root a negative. So um, you can't do this. So there's no solution. OK? And so there's no x-intercepts. Add that in there as well. So then I'm going to go back to the top then. So how could we spot this? So it's the b squared minus 4ac all the time. So if we do that, we can say here, when we have two answers like this, what we actually say, we say that there's two real and different roots. And the test for that, to see if you're going to have that, is just by looking at this part of the equation. So it's when b squared minus 4ac is positive, but it's got to be bigger than 0, is when you get two real and different roots. Okay. When we have this one, we get what we call one real, sometimes they call it also a repeated root, because it, when you're doing it algebraically, the answer comes out twice. So you might get x equals 5 and x equals 5. So it's two answers, but it's the same number. So it's one real repeated root. 
That happens when this is zero. Okay, but if you're asked when do you get real roots, then that's part of the real roots, and this is also the real roots. So then it would be b squared minus 4ac is greater or equal to zero if you're looking for real roots, because both of these count as real roots. The one on the far side has no real roots because it does not cross the x-axis. That's how we term it. And then for that one, as you can see, it has to be negative. And the way to be negative, less than zero. So in fact, if you want to know which of these three situations you've got, you can just test this part of the equation and know that you've got two real and different roots. It crosses twice, that this equals zero, and it's only going to touch the x-axis once, and, that's either going to, and it's going to be the maximum or the minimum turning point. And this one, you know, it's never going to touch the x-axis. So you don't even have to look for the x-intercepts. Okay, so write those notes down, and then I'm going to do two examples using that idea.